some reassessment of the old. I certainly hope that's the case. I think the mayor uh, uh, at least has an opportunity to do so. Uh, if they continue with the position that they simply want what they call the hybrid, which is not a hybrid, just simply builds a new, uh, a new expressway, uh, elevated expressway, then of course uh, that, uh, we'll, we'll continue to struggle with it. Uh, he's a good man, and I, and I hope he listens to what he thinks. It can come from the, from, uh, the province with respect to the environmental assessment. I, all I'm saying is council should have all the appropriate information. At the end of the day, I know exactly where they should go, but as a minimum, they should have the information. So there's nothing wrong with getting information. There's everything right, by the way, in finally choosing what I can continue to say, with perhaps a cliche, but I think it's true. You have to choose the 21st century, not the 20th, which is so, where I think some people want to So you say to John Tour right now, what do you say to him? Well, I've been saying it to him. Uh, <laughs> Right now, I'm saying, John, hold it for a second. Just hold it for a second. Get all the information you can. Listen to people, and see what what what, what we can do to try at least get some general approach. If we can't, some consensus. If we can't, then so be it. Let's but let's try to do that. And I think it's and for example, affordable housing. Man, do we have an affordable housing problem in the city? We'll just walk around where we'll be fine people, right? I mean, it, we need affordable housing. We have six projects over on the Keating Channel. There's an impact on all of them, and certainly two of them are gone. Now, that, that's just, what, collateral damage because we, we, we've got this choice? Like, we, don't, we don't hear that in the report. So I think that there's been a failure of getting the information out that is fair to everybody. Everybody can look at the information. Then if they got that position, fair enough. We go to the we go to the mat, we work it out in the same old democratic way. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I, actually want to I can't ever remember a former mayor doing something like this publicly telling a current mayor that his stance on such a big project is wrong. I think this is a first. Well Nathan Phillips was not happy with my forty five foot height by law, but that's an old story. <laughs> <laughs> There are, there, I mean, mayors participate. Nate, Nate Phillips used to drop by the office when I was first mayor, uh, and uh, I, I used to offer his modest thoughts, but he op offered private. Uh, Phil Givens used to, uh, he, he opposed what I was doing in the downtown for a while. Uh, so I, I, this is it's the nature of people who have been mayors, are, just because they're no longer mayors, are, they don't cease to be citizens or interested in the city. So, um, and I, I just uh, keep on keeping on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still in the Toronto, I chair the Toronto Lands Corporation. We've got a surplus school, so school board. So I'm involved with the city. I've been involved with the city all my life. Um, on the waterfront, where I spent a particular amount of time and energy, and still do, I'm still on the board of the Waterfront Regeneration Trust. Um, uh, uh, we've been for years, I've been for years, talking about taking down the garden. In, the, in its first 30, 30, 35 years of its life, it was wonderful, right? It was progress. But in the latter part of the, of the very latter part of the, night, of the 20th and the early part of the 21st, it became clear that it was now time to change it. Right? The city was changing, people are changing, the economics is changing, all of it's changing. Why would you want to keep on building the same old stuff, which is the, 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 the elevated car? So it, 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 it seemed to me and others that we have to take it down. So we did, a, a, a few years back, take down the far eastern portion. Now we've got an opportunity to take down the Near East portion from Jarvis over and build a grand boulevard like the Shah's Elysee, if possible, if you pay attention to imagine the design, right over the, uh, to, the, to the Don Valley. Why would we not want to do that? And instead, and instead, pay double the money to rebuild the gardener that was built 60 years ago. It's bizarre to me. I just don't get it. He is, he's a very reasonable man. Well, first of all, I think they should get, as I said earlier, uh, they should get all the information. They should get a report from the chief planner. They should get the, 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 the report from the, from the Board of Health and the MOH. They should get the report on, on, on the impact of, on affordable housing, which is one of the great issues of our time in the city, along with transit. Uh, so they should get all the information. Secondly, that they should remember why the garden was built. It's, it, 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 it reflected the vision of the city of the late 40s 
after the Second World War, late 40s and early 50s, that said, we're going to have this big suburban growth, and we need to have people living out there, working downtown, right? And after that, just whatever happens, usually the cops and muggers take over downtown. So American cities hollowed out their downtown. We came back and said, no, 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 we want to build downtown. And so therefore, slowly, not just us, but around the world, people began to move into the city. And so therefore, the idea of having an elevated expressway began to lose both its usefulness and its charm. And that's why a couple of years ago, they decided, the city council of the day decided, by a narrow vote, but decided to take down the far eastern part of the, of the expressway. All of a sudden, the people who were opposed to it said, oh, it's okay, nothing, there were no dire circumstances, right? So I think that's where we are now. Um, uh, this is a, the vision of Toronto in 1950. I was there. The vision of Toronto in 1950 with Fred Gardner and the councils of the day, yeah. that was building the, the, spot on, the, the Gardner Express. Why did you come here? Why did come here? And, 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 and that was the building. The vision today uh, is, is that, that you we know, you take it down and build a boulevard along the waterfront like the Shaws and Rizet have got enough imagination. Yeah. Now, why is, uh, why is it, I think the mayor, and he's a friend, and I've known him since he was a boy. Right? And to tell you the truth, probably people have forgotten, I had three, ca had three campaigns as mayor, and he was a 22-year-old law student, that he, and he ran my campaign. Okay? So we are friends. Um, I think he quite rightly sees himself as the mayor uh, who, who needs to do something about congestion, and he does. I mean, uh, 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 the next ten conversations he has, three or four of them are going to talk about congestion and the weather. He knows he can't do a lot about the weather, but he thinks he can do something about congestion, and he can do some things about congestion, and he's going to try and do that. I think when they approached him with this, and it said, well, if you do that, we're, we're, we're not going to fix congestion, we're going to make it probably worse, right? You, that did not fit with his notion that he's the congestion man. And I, in my old friendship, say to him, um, I understand in my bones because you, it's a 24 7 job of God, and they're at you all the time on congestion. The congestion is not the only thing that needs to be dealt with here. This is a singular opportunity to move us further into the 21st century and not simply go back and punish for the 20th century. So David, where, great we, where we see, uh, we see you can almost grab a hot dog off somebody's barbecue on these balconies that are so close to the freeway now. Yeah, I, it's a fait accompli if you ask me that this freeway is going to go. Well, just, I, just but we see a developer sitting here right next to the house. Yeah, the reason, but the reason they did uh, uh, put it up there, actually, that was that was what was won by the planners when they decided not to take down the garden, right? Yeah. Then they made sure that the option was still there. Otherwise, they would have tried to move into it. So they, they preserved the path to take it down. But why do you think the people are building their condos like right next to the freeway right now? Because uh, we're, we're intensifying the whole city, not just there. I live at Edmonton and Young, and they're building an 86-story building or whatever it is, right? So we're intensifying the city. We're all against sprawl now, right? Yeah. We used to call it suburban living, but we're now against, we're now against sprawl, yeah. okay? Well, uh, and, unless you just tell people to go around themselves in the lake, they got to live somewhere. So you either go up or out. Well, we're not going out anymore, right? Because of environmental, a whole bunch of reasons, good reasons. So we have to go up, and, and, and downtown, people can walk. They're not putting, you don't even have to, in some places, many places now, and I can guarantee more, you don't have to put parking in a condo building. Because we are building the vertical, walkable, approachable city. That's why they're building as close as they can. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.